Hello. Thank you so much for, for coming here uh, to this presentation. I will be talking about reusing the online uh, as, the, as the Android app. And before uh, like I will get to like, what it means, I will show you a bit of the history of how LibreOffice evolved uh, on the Android. So like, it is quite an old project these days. Like, it is eight years when, it's, when it all started. So the first thing was actually to get something on the screen. So uh, Michael Meeks and, and Tora Lilquist have pioneered this thing. And they had just like tremendous amount of things that they had to do uh, to make it work. Like first of all, like it was uh, necessary to make sure that there are some configure switches to be able to cross compile. Luckily, like at that time, uh, there was some effort uh, in uh, in LibreOffice to uh, to try to com uh, cross compile uh, on on Windows. So like building on Linux uh, for the Windows tar target uh, using Ming W. And uh, so there was some preparations for, for the cross compilation at that time, uh, so that was possible to use. But of course, like there were many limitations. Uh, then, like uh, when uh, the code was was compiled, there were limitations how to actually run that. So, like linker on the uh, on the Android at the time had limitation of some like 96 uh, dynamic libraries that it was possible to uh, to link together. So it was necessary to somehow overtake that. So Matush Kukan uh, at that time uh, was, was like merging the libraries together so that like they, uh, they become something bigger. Uh, there was lots of things uh, that had to be done uh, to actually like link in the components into one thing. So, uh, so like that, uh, like you, as you have the you know components in the, uh, the LibreOffice uh, that like Normally, they are dynamically loaded, but it was necessary to get them actually into the uh, one application, uh, compile them together so that like, no additional dynamic loading is happening like, when you start using that. Um, there were a lot of fun uh, with font config because uh, like, it has to load the files uh, from the disk to, uh, to actually like, being able to use the fonts for the rendering, uh, the stuff on the screen, and stuff like that. So, um, debugging. Debugging at the time was a nightmare as well. Like it was that you had to connect uh, the GDB uh, some remote way to the to the device. Try to debug there. Uh, in order to actually like being able to debug, you had to uh, put there some timeout uh, and uh, and uh, like do it in the in the right order. So, like yeah, big thanks to Tor, big thanks to Michael to actually get something and something looked like this, which was awesome. Like, it was the entire LibreOffice running on the tablet. Uh, but of course, like, you see the limitations. Like, uh, for the users, uh, uh, when do you want to uh, use uh, something like touch-based, uh, it is just not fit for that. Like, you have the toolbars there, uh, you have the, the menus, which are small on the device and everything. So it was necessary to go further. So the next step here was the rendering the whole pages. So that was something that was like uh, reasonably uh, possible to achieve. So I think it was Tomáš who was working on that, or somebody. Uh, I don't recall that well, sorry. Uh, but uh, like you were able to actually like render the entire page uh, from the document, um, have it as, as previews uh, there, and then like show the uh, show the entire screen, uh, it on the entire screen without the limitations of the of the UI that was uh, that was around that. So that was a great progress, but it was not getting us uh, anywhere near to the editing that we needed. So the next step uh, was. Uh, to actually like use the work that was being done to online uh, on on providing the content of the uh, of the pages and of the documents via the LibreOffice kit. Uh, so you have probably heard uh, many times about the tilt rendering. So uh, so who of you knows what is the tilt rendering? So there are some who do not raise that ha their hands. So I will explain. So the tilt rendering idea is that uh, actually uh, instead of rendering the entire screen, 
um, when you want to update, it is uh, easier to actually partition it into some, uh, some areas. So normally, like in the desktop applications, like when you type somewhere, uh, anywhere on the screen, uh, there is some area of that screen invalidated and it is re-rendered. In order to make it easier, like what actually is the area of the screen that was invalidated, we partition the entire document into uh, so-called tiles, which are uh, 256 to 256 bitmaps, and uh, say, okay, so during this typing, uh, only the uh, only the third tile uh, was uh, was changed. So request the, this like third tile uh, or the tile in the like third. Uh, third column, uh, first row, and, and send it again. And it is uh, easier in that way uh, that actually the client, so here uh, the Android application, but in the online, uh, the, uh, the, the, the client in the, in the online only gets a new bitmap, it draws it on the screen. So even though like, it looks like text, uh, like what is, uh, what is actually showing on the screen is not text, but it, it is a series of bitmap. And, uh, uh, so the idea here uh, was to use this technique of the tiles, um, and uh, we needed to have some like uh, way uh, to compose them uh, to to create the document. Uh, so the idea at that time was to reuse the code from Mozilla. Uh, they were using the tile rendering for their documents as well, and uh, so uh, Quickie uh, has has ripped off uh, the. The composer of the tasks uh, from the from the Mozilla um, to actually like being able on the Android device uh, to to show the show the documents uh, on the screen. So now it was nicely showing the document screen, and it was a great uh, great base for further work, like when you uh, were editing, because you were able to request new tasks and uh, and uh, like get them, and so like you were able to update the document. So, uh, as the next step uh, in the in the following years, uh, they were adding more features to the toolbar and elsewhere in the Android app. Uh, but unfortunately, it turned out uh, that like the split, uh, the split uh, uh, on the uh, between the online, uh, where there were lots of development happening, and the, uh, between the Android application. Uh, is like too low on the level. So it was that it was sharing the LibreOffice kit, but not, nothing above that. And so like for every feature that was added to the, to the online, it was necessary to actually like re-implement it uh, for, the, uh, for the Android app as well. Many people have done great work there, so many things uh, were like being ported to, to the Android app, but it was not just get, uh, like uh, uh, catching up. Uh, with the online. So, um, very recently, the idea uh, was to actually, uh, actually, um, like, do the split not uh, between the, the, like, the Java part and the, uh, and the LibreOffice kit, but much higher, and actually reuse as much of the online uh, for, the, uh, for the Android app as possible. And uh, Tor has, uh, has pioneered that uh, for iOS, it turned out that it is something that actually works. And uh, so why not to do it uh, for, for Android as well? Uh, let's share code. And so what needed to be done? So first of all, uh, it was necessary to adapt uh, like how the things are being built. Uh, because uh, like so far, uh, all the uh, like the entire Android application was being built in the core.git. Uh, so like there's uh, uh, there's an Android folder in there, and uh, when you were on Android, you've set up the configure uh, to cross compile, blah blah blah, and at the end, uh, like you had uh, some APK somewhere in the in the work there, and uh, you were fine. So um, I wanted to to build on top of this. Uh, uh, as much as possible, uh, so I did uh, the adaptations to this uh, to this code, so that uh, instead, uh, so so in addition uh, to creation of this APK, uh, the uh, libLO native code .so, uh, which is basically uh, all the merged code uh, together uh, that is needed for the Android uh, for the. Uh, 
for the tiles to be uh, to be drawn on Android. Um, so it is the like basically the entire LibreOffice kit and and all the all the code from LibreOffice that is needed for its functionality. So that it was possible to have it as a like separate SO uh, that you can link to something else. So that was uh, that was the first step. Then. I wanted uh, this to be convenient for people to actually use it. So um, I uh, created the, the Android project uh, like from scratch and, uh, uh, and uh, did it the way like how the Android uh, uh, projects using native code are supposed to look like in Android Studio. So um, from the, from the LibreOffice point of view, like in online.git, there's an Android subfolder, but this Android subfolder looks like exactly as, as a normal Android project uh, that just works in the Android Studio using the standard tool. Uh, to be able to build that, actually, uh, like using this, uh, this normal tools, uh, I, had to, uh, I had to use CMake for actually building the LOL WSD. Uh, so there's a, a CMake file list, uh, .txt, or how, how do they call that, uh, that lists the uh, that lists the, the files that need to be um, uh, compiled from low WSD um, like into, into one thing, and it links against this libello native code uh, from the uh, core git that you have elsewhere. And um, you can directly like uh, press, uh, press build uh, or run from the Android Studio. It just you know builds it all together. So like the inconvenient step for people who are not used to Android development is uh, like the first step of actually like building this libello native code uh, in core.git. But other than that, like on top of that, that's you know as as, as people are used to that. Side effect of that is that the debugging of the native part is just much easier than, than what it was uh, like years ago. Uh, so, so directly from the, from the Android Studio, you can open uh, the C++ code. As you can see it, you can start the debug app. It, it just works. Of course, like when it is outside of the low WSD, um, you have to have the, uh, the symbols for the slip LO native code SO as well. Uh, but it is actually not necessary to have them in the APK. Uh, it is possible to, um, to, to like, create the APK with the strip symbols, and then uh, it is described in this readme like, what you need to set up in the Android Studio. So like, you point to the, uh, to the version of the library that has the debugging symbols, and then like, you, see the break, uh, you can set the breakpoints like, directly in the, uh, in the uh, user interface of, of Android Studio and, and all these things just, just work for you. Uh, the next step was uh, to create the minimal uh, application. So Gulsha uh, has, has done lots of work in this. Uh, so the UI is actually very simple uh, for, the, for the document uh, uh, showing. So you have only a web view over the entire screen of the Android device. And in this web view, uh, you run the JavaScript from the, uh, from the, uh, the online. Uh, again, Tor has done uh, lots of stuff to this JavaScript so that, uh, so that it's prepared for this. There's a fake web socket uh, in the in this JavaScript thing so that like, we do not have to use the normal WebSocket communication. Uh, instead, like, we talk directly to this web view. And like, there are two directions, actually, uh, like how you need to send messages. So from the JavaScript into the native code, uh, you use the uh, edit, uh, JavaScript interface. Um, you specify like, to, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, object uh, is supposed to get the messages and some uh, some handler name uh, that you can then use in the JavaScript for actually accessing this stuff and uh, um, like uh, in this object like you have to like when you have the class for that like you have to annotate the methods uh, that you can call with JavaScript interface and then uh, in the JavaScript you can use it directly like this so long message handle the dot uh, post mobile message stuff things work. Uh, of course, it is more, uh, more advanced the other way around, so from the native to JavaScript, uh, because uh, you cannot uh, just, uh, just call uh, the JavaScript like the JavaScript methods directly. Instead, like you have to use this, uh, uh, this uh, JavaScript uh, uh, colon 
uh, and uh, the thing after that will be parsed by the JavaScript, executed, and, and stuff done. So, uh, so this is like how you call from the native to, to, to JavaScript. And then, uh, lots of functionality has to, had to be ported from the old app. So, uh, what I described so far was just the editing part, but uh, the old app uh, in the core.git had much more than this. Uh, so, like, there was the initial shell, like, where you have the recent documents and stuff like that, so that had to be ported. Uh, it was necessary to associate the files the same way the old application was doing that. So, that, like, when you install, uh, when you install the, the thing, uh, you will, uh, like, and uh, for example, in your email client, you, cl uh, you tap on some, some file uh, that, it, uh, that under it notes that, uh, that like, uh, uh, the online uh, or, or this uh, Android app based on online uh, can actually handle these files and stuff that. Of course, uh, lots of things uh, uh, are some, uh, some necessary uh, hacks or how to, well, it's the only solution, so it is not a hack, I don't know. Uh, so, like, for example, for this font config to be able to work, um, you have to provide it as assets, but then you have to copy it, actually, to, uh, to the storage part of the, uh, of the Android app, so that, like, the, uh, the native, uh, native code can use that and, uh, and uh, do stuff with that. Then there were some, some additional activities uh, or fragments inside the application, like uh, showing the license notes and, and notice, and, and of course there were some settings. And then, uh, uh, thing, uh, this year, uh, Kaishu Sahu uh, did just amazing job uh, helping with this. So he has added a great list of features into, the, uh, into the, uh, this app. Uh, so that was print support, slideshow, so that like you can start the slideshow and, and see it on the screen, inserting images, sharing documents, save as uh, into, the, uh, into a new name, um, uh, permissions, so like, uh, if, of course, uh, the app asks for permissions to access, uh, access the storage, uh, but it has to be explained to the user when, uh, when they like, initially uh, decline this dialog. Uh, there were some uh, uh, launcher shortcuts, uh, support for more documents in the safe uh, and uh, very importantly, dimming the document when inactive, uh, so that like normally uh, you have the choice between like uh, uh, showing the document still on the screen or uh, or actually like dimming it. Uh, according to the timeout that is in, in Android, uh, but uh, like with this, uh, uh, we actually listen to the dimming. Uh, dimming messages that come from the uh, from the online uh, from the online code and uh, uh, and then trigger the dim uh, from the Android. Of course, when you wake it up again, the, the timeout starts uh, from the from the start. And uh, tremendous amount of uh, bug fixing. So getting the life cycle correctly, or at least to the state like where where it is now, uh, was a big struggle. Uh, because like there are some, uh, some like many threads that are that are going on in there and align it uh, with the uh, with the Android's life cycle, like how it's uh, how the application is supposed to be started, stopped, and uh, and how it's uh, supposed to to perform, is uh, like was a month of tries, like not not a constant, like uh, eight hours a day, but you know it was a struggle. Uh, and uh, then uh, various other, uh, other small fixes, so startup time, the font config was just uh, taking tremendous amount of start, uh, uh, time on the first startup uh, because um, like it was trying to, uh, to, catch, uh, to catch all the uh, Noto fonts uh, that are on the Android device, and there are many of them. Uh, so um, I've just disabled that so that uh, so that like the the startup uh, after that is nearly instant. Now, of course, there were some crashes and some other small things. So you probably want to see how it how it works. So I've recorded a video because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to. to stream it directly to the screen. 
So like when I started, you see the shell. Uh, now I've tapped on one of the documents, uh, like it is loading the document. Now it has shown on the screen. You have to start the editing by using the pencil button. Then I was trying to type something. Of course, I'm slow in typing on the device. But you can see that it does something, actually. And you can even insert an image, which is what I tried to show here as well. So now I'm inserting the image. It asked me what. So some random image. Well, the only one that I had there usable. So it inserts the image. And now, like when I finish that, it, sh it auto saves. So now, when you restart it again, you will see that the modifications are in there. So that's it for the demo, I think. And And future steps. So there's uh, obviously more to do. Uh, as you have seen, the, the text input is not ideal. Uh, there, there are some lags. Part of that is that like it, it was a debug build. So, uh, so like there's a lot of uh, logging going on and, and stuff like that, uh, which adds to the time that it takes to, uh, to actually type something. Um, but uh, I have a suspicion that actually like parsing this JavaScript star uh, stuff and, uh, and passing like big strings through that like takes a lot of time. I have to measure that, like if it is really true. And if it is really true, it is possible to actually have a WebSocket open inside the app on Android. Uh, so like uh, I would be able to use that for the communication as we do uh, in, in the normal online. Um, still, there are some, uh, some uh, sometimes the document doesn't load, so sometimes, like when you uh, when you press the like when you um, trigger opening a document, you get a JavaScript error that uh, like uh, the the document couldn't be accessed. Um, some timing issue, most probably. Uh, I don't know. Have to debug that. Uh, then. Uh, uh, the document creation code, uh, the old way uh, there is that, uh, that it just copies some template file somewhere to the new name and then opens it. Uh, in, that in the meantime, we have the possibility in the online to, uh, to actually use the, uh, some kind of template, uh, uh, template operation and, uh, and start the, the document just directly from a template and maybe some, some more fixes because, because like, yeah. There is always stuff to fix. So that's it from me. Uh, big thank you for listening, but even bigger thanks to, uh, to people uh, who were working on that. So I list here the people uh, who, uh, who helped me with this uh, in, the, in the online part. But of course, like it is building uh, on uh, lots of stuff that were uh, done by Torque, Wiki, and, uh, and Clough, uh, and, and other people. So thank you so much. If you want to uh, get involved in this, uh, like uh, it is, uh, it is familiar for you. If you have any experience with the Android uh, development, uh, you will see that it is easy to do. And steps how to how to get the stuff that is uh, not that easy is described in this Android README, so you can you can see it and and try yourself. So that's it from me. Thank you so much.